New concerns being raised with the United States and Russia securing now an agreement on destroying Syria's chemical weapons. How does this impact U.S. foreign policy? And what about the president? Let's bring in our political insiders, John LeBoutlier, former Republican congressman for New York, Pat Adel, Fox News contributor, former pollster for President Jimmy Carter, Doug Sean, also a Fox News contributor and former pollster for Bill Clinton. Um, did the president make things worse? Well, in the short term, I think the settlement with the Russians probably bought him some time. But the speech on Tuesday, if I have my dates correct, clearly from the polling didn't. Moreover, we're looking at a situation where the Syrian government and the Russians have the upper hand in terms of the verification of the agreement. We have a budget that is DOA, a debt ceiling that is still to be litigated, Obamacare still up in the air. Bottom line, all that's happened this week is we've bought some time and there are a lot of unanswered questions. Let me throw a couple of polls up on the screen here. Real clear politics poll averaging President Obama's job approval. Um, boy, it continues to tank here. Um, and then you look at his Wall Street Journal uh, poll, and it's even worse. Pat, what do you make? Well, I think he's deteriorating. I think he would be, if the Republicans had any message at all, he would really be in trouble. This was not a good week for his leadership. He was bailed out, as Doug suggested. I mean, the Putin came and gave him a, threw him a life preserver, but unfortunately a lot of us think it's filled with lead. What it prevented was the humiliation he was about to have in the Congress on the question of whether people would support the war. The, the, what we have right now is a country where people don't believe anybody's leading anything. John? I would say we've just been watching one of the single most inept episodes in presidential leadership in our lifetime. Really? Oh, absolutely. This thing... He fumbled this thing so badly, it ends up being a handoff to Vladimir Putin. Who now runs the world. Who, yeah, he's the savior of the world who's on his way to Iran to do a deal there on their nuclear program, which will not be good for the United States and the West. Nothing Putin does is good for the West. And he took Snowden in. Obama insulted him. Four weeks ago on this show, Greg, our friend Doug, Doug Schoen here said that that comment that the president made about, oh, Putin, yeah, he's the kid slouching in the back of the class, that would cause a backlash from Putin. And we've now, we're beginning to see it. I want to put up a couple of Gallup sure. polls uh, because <clears throat> they're very revealing. Sure. You know, normally when a president gives a speech to the nation urging action, people rally behind him. Just the opposite here. Look at this. His speech made it worse, arguably. Uh, more people after the speech uh, rallied against him. Show up the next one here. Um, U.S. airstrikes on Syria. More people now are against it after the president's speech. Right. And this is why what John is saying is so important. Short term, the president was either going to lose the vote badly or have to pull the bill without even a vote. The Russians knew that they were on strong ground so that the deal they got, which doesn't even include an explicit guarantee of force if the agreement isn't kept. And I don't think there's a person watching who believes the Russians and Syrians can be trusted. Bottom line, the Russians have won. The president looks weaker. And we are in a situation where the American people, as Pat was saying, are losing well, any confidence looks in this president. Who looks weaker? Uh, Obama or Boehner? Uh, it's hard to choose between, two, between the two of them, frankly, because the, the Republicans continue to failure to have any message at all. But I want to come back to these numbers in this poll. We're looking at something, Greg, very significant. The, the week that the administration, the president, Mr. Kerry, and the leadership in Congress in both parties went out and told the American people they had to eat the dog food. Right. And guess what? The dogs didn't eat it. Then he gets up and gives a speech and demands that they do what he wants. And he takes all of the undecideds. That's the important number we saw in those polls, like in Pew, from 23 to 9. As soon as he spoke, they all went to opposition. This is, and the Republicans' leadership has been part of that. The leader of the Republican Party got, what, 10 John, votes you now? have been very critical of the Speaker of the House, John Boehner. So I put the yeah. question to you, who's yeah. more incompetent or inept, the President or the Speaker? Well, I, think, I think the Speaker's marginally more incompetent and inept at the moment, including in this episode, because he immediately came out, along with the Majority Leader Cantor, in favor of bombing Syria, without ever asking the members of his Republican conference where they're at. And when they did a head count the day of the President's speech, 
they had a dozen members out of 190 or whatever. Right. It's 200. Path- or 200. It's yeah. pathetic how little these guys know how to lead. But I want to echo something bigger than this. That 63% number in that poll, that is two-thirds of the American people telling the government, we're not doing it anymore. We're not like the movie Network. We're mad as hell, and we're not taking it anymore. This, and there's no leader leading that, Greg. There's it's no all, guy on TV rallying. Yep. It's grassroots. It's, it's all spontaneous. Is it foreign policy by accident? It is foreign policy by accident, and a sense that it's being made on the fly, along with domestic policy being done on the fly. But the president said the, the only thing that counts is the end result. It doesn't how, matter how messy it is. And that's just not true, Greg. Bottom line, the American people see a government that is going from crisis to crisis, that is rudderless, where there's no leadership on the Democratic or Republican side, and confidence in institutions, which has already been low, is getting worse. And here's the key thing, Greg, about this, what took place. The American people, as John said, the spontaneity with which they responded. They, you normally, historically, when a president gives a speech or the administration says we have to take action, the country will rally around. These are the worst numbers Just ever. The opposite. Just the opposite. the opposite. And more importantly, it's across the board. It's Democrats, Republicans, and particularly independents. It is, and it is the elite. It is the political class in Washington say, we want this in the mainstream of the country from both all parties and all ideologies going, no, no, no. This is historic. If spills of the domestic politics, it could be really big. Stick around. Our political insiders are back in a flash. Don't go away.